today i'm going to talk about exception handling in core java which is one of the very important topic because when you are doing the project development everywhere you have to do this yes yes so when you do the programming and if you remember we have two kind of problem how many kind of problem we have two mm -hmm. kind of one is compile time when you uh, when you uh, write code you do a lot of mistakes or not syntax mm -hmm. so what that is called compile time error who uh, detects this error compiler so compile time error is uh, regarding syntax say yes yes mm -hmm. syntax error you know it or shall i explain you what syntax error is yes you said no. don't tell me yeah we error. know if you are writing it, forget the semicolon, forget the curly yes. bracket. You always uh, do this, uh, you know, great job. Mm -hmm. no? Second problem comes at runtime. You might not observe. Runtime means when you run run your code, right? Second kind of issue is runtime error. Runtime problem. Runtime means when we are executing our code. When we are executing our code. Is clear to everybody? Mm -hmm. When you're getting our code, if any problem comes, then what, what issue is? Your program will terminate. If issue comes at runtime, then what happened? Then program will terminate. Do you understand? Terminate. And this termination is called, and this is called abnormal termination please you are not replying abnormal mm -hmm. termination means uh, whatever code is supposed to execute termination it's not uh, executed end to end mm -hmm. in real life have you heard about accident what happened you may be traveling right one place to other place but you, you know you got something wrong in between same thing so program what, what is the issue with the uh, runtime problem is so run, when runtime problem comes what issue is your program will Terminate. Terminate. Uh, after complete execution or after partial execution? Partial after execution. partial. And uh, when problem comes at runtime, we have given a special name to it. That is called exception. What is exception? Runtime errors. Yeah, very good. Runtime errors are known as exception. Clear? No, it's mm -hmm. not clear. Are you following me? So, what your intention is? If any problem comes at runtime, you have to mitigate it, uh -huh. right? Q, so that your program should not terminate abnormally. So, in mm -hmm. order to uh, do this, we have five keywords in Java: try, catch. Yeah, how many keywords? Finally, five, five keywords. Uh, five. Finally, and throw and throws. Yes. Uh, These are the keywords through which you can handle compile time error or runtime error? Runtime error. Runtime error. So these are the keywords in Java through which you can handle the runtime error. If you don't understand, please let me know. I can show you uh, uh, some runtime error uh, and uh, I'll show you as well uh, how it terminates. Ready? Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I think showing Complete. it actually helps. Yeah. I'm going to show you the helper program. Again, I'm telling you, I'm not going to make weight of program simple. You class. Mm, Runtime demo. Please, if you're confused, you have complete right to ask question. I'm typing all the program. Closing so much things still is moving slowly, slowly. Hmm. Hello, you know, mean. Yes. Your answer should be, I know. Do you know? <laughs> Mujhe bolo. Like here, uh, 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 what I'm doing, uh, we have two number. Can you see this number? And if uh, you are declaring the result, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to divide my uh, number with zero. 
Uh-huh. Then what happened? This is an issue. Are you following me? Because yes. in computer, divide by zero is not defined. I, what happened? Can you see this? Mm-hmm. If uh, you run your code, last two line will not execute. When it will not execute? Uh, when you give the input zero, right? But this mm-hmm. input you can take from the keyboard as well. I don't know. Do you know how to take input from the keyboard? Yes. So here you can use scanner. Scanner. Yeah, scanner. scanner. New That's scanner. You know just it. That in. Okay. So mm-hmm. enter num please. So this num I'm taking a number, right? Which I want to divide. So please help me scan the dot. Confused? Next no. No, no, Next no, 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 no. You know this. And the G, this program will run uh, good as long as you enter a non-zero value. Mm-hmm. Shall I run it? Yes. If you run it, uh, and uh, here you can show it. So let me run it. People, what happened in this code? See, if you enter uh, four, right? So what happened? Due four, mm-hmm. then num by four, hundred by four, uh-huh. twenty-five. Mm-hmm. So it would say how what happened? The result is twenty-five. No so result will yeah. Twenty-five, right? Done. Mm-hmm. You got no point? But 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 yeah, yeah. I'm saying this is normal execution. You have given if I run it again. Here you are giving four. Are you following me? Mm-hmm. So give is four. And num is 100, result is 0. So num means 100 divided by 4, 25. Mm-hmm. So result is assigned by 25. Okay. And okay. Then here message is hi, what happened? In last result is 25. Enter. Clear? Mm-hmm. Yes. But if you enter 0, then what happened? The moment it is trying to divide it, right? 0. Mm-hmm. 100 divided by 0, your program will terminate from here. Result will be 0 remaining and your program will terminate. What happened? Result is it will it won't be preprint. Why? Because program is terminated. Let, let me enter the 0. Can you see this? Oh yes. man, program is terminated from here. You, you cannot see this message. This message is uh, printed by the JVM main thread. Mm-hmm. That is just showing the cause of the issue. What? It's saying arithmetic exception divided by 0 at line number 15. See? Mm-hmm. Got it? Problem. And you tell me when problem comes, your program terminates or not? Yes. Yes. So this terminates uh, after execution of all the statement, or it terminates in between? In between. This is called abnormal termination, and this situation is called exception in Java. Okay. Got it? So, so what is my intention? My intention is if somebody enters the zero, my program should not terminate. Uh-huh. You got my intention? Yes. Other people. Do you understand the intention? Intention yeah. is you should make your program robust. Robust means if somebody do the mistake, you should properly, uh, you know, recover so from. You want us to make pro- a program there where it is prepared for mistakes, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. I'm going to do that. So next my program, I'm going to show you the same program. You see my speed? I'm going to show the same program uh, using try catch. Right. So. See, the the code uh, which can uh, you know show the exception, right? The code which can show the exception, you should write in try. So who is the culprit in this? Only this part, yes, you know. Mm-hmm. So you should write try curly bracket open and close call block. And when block is closed, you can use catch block. When it is closed, you can use catch block. Catch uh, parenthesis open and close. And here you can use a class exception. And you can give the variable name anything, right? Anything you can give. And inside it, if you want to print the cause of it, you can use it. Can you see this? Mm-hmm. This syntax, right? So mm-hmm. this code can cause problem, especially when due is zero. And here, instead of uh, writing this, you can print the very high level message, right? For now. Got it? So, people, let's see how it will work, right? And here I'm going to write he competition is 
done successfully. It's clear, guys? So let's yes. see the execution. See, uh, catch block only will execute when exception will not come. If okay. any exception will not come in try, then this code will execute, this code will execute, catch block will be skipped. After that, those statements will continue. Got it? But what about uh, when exception comes over here? Are you following me? So when exception, exception comes over happens. here, immediately when you, your div is zero, you know it. Mm -hmm. When div is zero, exception happens. When exception happens, your control will go directly in the catch block. This statement will be skipped. Are you following mm -hmm. me? When your exception will come, whatever statement we have between catch and uh, the point exception is coming, all the statement will be skipped, right? Your yeah. control will go to the catch and this message will be printed and then your program will continue. It's not going to terminate. So catch is going to suppress the exception. Are you following, following me? Catch will, any guess? Suppress. Well, suppress. Suppress the exception. Are you following me? If any exception comes, catch will suppress it and your program execution will be continued. Um, I got a question, sir. Please. Uh, is that get misses uh, function uh, defined inside the class exception? exception. What is exception. the definition of that thing? Actually, definition is whatever error comes, uh, it will ca uh, catch with the error and print it. So that you okay. can come to know the cause of it. It just okay. prints out the um, error cause or uh, error cause, some error explanation cause. about only, that thing? Only, only error cause. Okay. And uh, this method can behave differently. This message will be not fixed. It depends on what kind of issue is coming, right? So mm -hmm. this message behavior is changed at runtime. This is example of polymorphism. Why? Mm -hmm. EP.get message behavior is not fixed. It could be anything. It depends on what kind of exception is coming in try. Okay. Are you following me? So guys, catch will execute always? No, 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 no. No. So let me run line by line. First, I'm going to show you when exception will not come. People, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Line by line execution, I'm showing. So catch will only catch. execute if that catch criteria is met. Only then will it work. Otherwise, it will catch just catch will only execute work. when exception comes. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. The here I'm running my program, and I'm entering uh, eight, right? And uh, enter people. Can you see the line by line execution? Mm -hmm. So my control comes here and due we have eight. See the mm -hmm. num we have hundred, hundred upon eight. Any guess? Mm -hmm. So, so hundred upon Open. eight is coming to twelve. Open something because yeah. Uh, yeah. it will take only uh, integer value. Integer. Decimal value will be ignored, right? Mm -hmm. So twelve is coming. Uh, it is normal value. It will say what? They see output. Hey, competition is done successfully. Hey, competition done successfully. Mm -hmm. Then it will not go in catch block, right? It will go to the line number 23. Hey, hi, what happened? Can you see this? And in last result is 12. Clear to everybody? Now I'm going to show you the second execution where I'm going to give zero. zero. Give the zero, right? So what mm -hmm. happened? See the flow. Everything is cool. Now num divided by zero, right? Your program will terminate and result will be remain zero and this two line will be skipped and your control will go to the catch block let me show you can you see this immediately it goes in the catch block and it will print the cause of the exception can you see this divide by zero mm -hmm. after it your program will continue so program because of catch program is not going to terminate abnormally you got the benefit of it then mm -hmm. yes now your program is not terminating because of catch even though you are and entering zero, an exception is coming. But when exception comes, what happened? Whatever statement uh, you have between catch and the mm -hmm. point where exception comes, those are skipped. See, hey, competition is done successfully. Hey, competition is done successfully. Those are not printed. Mm -hmm. You got it or not? Yes. So I, I have a quick question. Now again, go ahead. So, if there is a while loop and it's an indefinite loop, can this help to catch the error? Of course, that is that's a different approach. Okay, no, okay. you can make it. Uh, anybody have any question query in this code? 
Yeah, what about that uh, get message thing? Get message, whatever error is coming, you see it is printing divided by zero. It is printing the cause of the issue in the try block. So we don't have to write anything in it? Nothing, so nothing. It is, it is inbuilt in the exception class. Okay. So it is inbuilt and printing the predefined message. You got it? See, this is the first program. Another concept is one try can have multiple catch. What is it, man? Multiple catch. Try multiple one try, catch. one try can have one try multi catch. See, I'm not doing anything, right? This is there already. See, I'm just writing one more catch blocks. You see the syntax, sir? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, one try can have multiple catch. So, but here class would be different. I'm just uh, writing an another exception. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Oh man, what difference is? We have multiple catch, right? In yes. this, if arithmetic exception will come, it will go go here. Are you following me? Hello? Yes, yes. If, but only one catch will execute because in try only one exception will come. Are you following me? Basically, you want to handle, mm -hmm. uh, you want to execute a different message on different exception. If arithmetic exception comes, it will execute. If exception comes, it will execute. Are you following me? But at a time only one will execute. Got my point? Mm -hmm. Done. Another thing is uh, with try catch, we can write a finally block. And this is last for today. What they said? With try catch, we can write finally. Let's understand the use of the finally, right? Sir? Okay. Uh, what I'm going to I, show I got you. a question. What's the difference between the arithmetic exception and the exception? Like besides Actually, all we, the... have, we have we have category of exception, like SQL exception, arithmetic exception, mm -hmm. uh, file not I'll tell you variety of exception soon. Right? Okay. Hello. We have category of the exception. And from exception, you can take the decision. Oh, this happened. SQL exception? There is some problem in the query. File not found exception, file does not exist in the system. Are you following me? Web service exception? Oh, my remote web service failed. So we have different category of the exception and through which you will come to know what problem is. We have try, catch, and I'm just writing another block, finally block. Oh my God, Why we need to understand why, what is the use of finally. Can you see this? Try, yes. catch, and finally. The finally block always comes in the last. Please write it. Finally, always, comes as a last block. You got a point? Mm -hmm. And catch will always execute? No, no, no. Catch will only execute when exception comes in try block. But finally will always execute. Remember it. What I said? Finally, finally will, always. will always execute. Got a point? Finally will always execute. So here if you are writing some statement Aha, I am finally, hello, mm -hmm. I'm finally, and you can print the result equals to result. Confuse people? If I run it, see, mm -hmm. I'm giving zero what you were right, zero. Finally, executing, can say, aha, I'm finally, result is zero. If I'm entering some good value, right, like two, then it's still finally executing. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. But you see one thing, right? This statement and this statement is always executing. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, man. Then then what you are writing in the finally and what you are writing in the last, no difference. Yes or no? Then question yes. is what is the specialty in finally? Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that. <laughs> but I'm telling you finally is special. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. How? Like here, if you write some return, return means you are saying, uh, you know, go back. So when you say go back, you know what I'm saying? Return. Mm -hmm. In that case, this statement will not execute. Return means you are saying, hey man, stop your execution. In that case, what happened? Finally say, wait, 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 let me execute first before returning. Let me try. Hello? Mm -hmm. Now in this situation, what happened? You see, finally executing, but this statement is not executing. So finally is more than a normal statement or not? Mm -hmm. Finally will always execute, I'm telling you. When you return, Another use case is, suppose uh, you, you are handling some exception. Exception could not be handled. Suppose here I'm writing null pointer exception. People, mm -hmm. I'm writing null pointer exception, clear? So mm -hmm. if you enter zero, zero is not a null pointer exception. Okay. So, so exception will come, exception won't be handled. If exception won't be handled, your program will terminate, even though you have catch block. 
Mm-hmm. What I say, guys? Okay. I said sometime you write uh, exception, and uh, here what exception comes? Tell me. Exception which comes is arithmetic. arithmetic. So if arithmetic exception comes, uh, it is not going to be a handle now. Then what mm-hmm. happened? Your program will terminate, but finally will execute. Let me show you. E, even though you have catch, but be, but 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 see, you have catch, but since uh, you are handling null pointer exception, uh-huh. are you following me? Exception yes. cannot be handled, but finally is executing. Can you see this? So yes. finally is more than a normal block or not? Tell me. Yes. Finally, will execute. Even exception is not handled. You guys confused? No. So finally is basically permanent. It will always permanent. Happen. Permanent. Finally is permanent. There's only one situation. <laughs> finally will not execute. You want to know? Yes. If you write system dot exit, system dot exit means it is a you know indication to JVM. Hey JVM, terminate. Right. So in this in this situation, what happened? You have to pass some number. If you write system dot exit, then finally will not execute. You are saying stop it. Are you following uh, me? Mm-hmm. So this kind of question I ask interview, right? When finally does not execute. Can you see this? Mm-hmm. This much is executed, but system dot exit, everything is gone. Even finally is not executing, right, guys? Okay. So finally uh, is not executed only in one case. Finally is not executed. In when one case, right? System dot exit. It's clear. Yes. Uh, three minutes, what's, what's, three the minutes ma- more. what's the numeric value given as a parameter in exit function? Does that represent yeah, yeah. true or false? I'm telling you, this number makes sense uh, when you are calling this method uh, from batch batch processing. I'm telling you, I'm the person uh, who knows it, right? If you ask this question with normal trainer, they cannot answer it. I know it is recorded. Why? Mm-hmm. Because really, I have seen the use of it. Again, I'm telling you, I was okay. working in a project which was called in batch. If you call in batch processing, then they, this number is re- returned to that, and on the basis of this number, you can take the decision. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you need to know what happened in the code, right? So you can return mm-hmm. zero, one, two. Normally, when your program uh, terminate, uh, you know, in normal fashion, is return zero. Okay. Okay, so and last for today. Clear? I know I'm moving fast, but people just honest feedback. Do you think whatever I have done today is really wasting up your time? You didn't understand anything? No. No. Right. Right. So I think this is enough for today. Let me send you all the code and you do practice of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because I told you uh, this session is for 30 minutes and in 30 minutes we done a lot. Monday, I'm going to cover, you know, other keyword. So Monday would be last session for it, but tomorrow we don't have session, right? So okay. let me tell you one more thing. Uh, we can write uh, try cash together. That's fine. You know it, right? But I'm telling you, can we write try and finally? Yeah. Yes. I'm just showing you the use of it. That is for your knowledge purpose. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can write try and finally no cash block. Mm-hmm. Can you see this, please? Yes. Hey, but in this then in this case, what happened? If we don't have cash, exception won't be handled. That's it. Yeah, what we can say? find the error. Somebody can say, somebody can ask this question. Can we write try uh, and finally answer is yes. You can, but exception will be not handled. Exception will mm-hmm. be only handled when you have cash. Can mm-hmm. we write try independently? Answer is no. Mm-hmm. No, no. Try, but no. I'm telling you in Java 7, we have some feature where we can write only try. Mm-hmm. In Java 7, that is called try with resource. So, what about the last two sys outlines? Like, hi, what happened? Result is if we're writing finally, do we really need those two lines? Actually, yeah. The, actually, finally is different thing. I told you, right? Finally, we'll always yes. execute. But this this can execute, cannot. Suppose exception comes. Finally, we'll execute, but this line will not execute. Clear? So, no. finally, block is really something special. And in finally blog in real time project, we do the resource clone cleanup activity. Suppose you want to close the file or you want to open the connection or if you want to free the memory, those kind of code you can write over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So guys, recording is there. I'll make a level to you. Fine.
so guys i want you should try this much try and cry and come on monday okay okay so people i think 30 minutes is done i am stopping session here thank you